Welcome back to the arcade. Well, in the last video, I fixed the uh, remote battery problem and uh, got that squared away. So I figured I'd go ahead and, and just show a little bit about uh, what little maintenance I need to do to this. It, it was the displaying a credit dot, which means it has some type of problem, and I need to set the clock. I did go in there after I finished the last video and went into the menu and reset the, the date and the time, but I didn't have my uh, phone with me, so I didn't have any time out here. I didn't know exact what time it was, so I just guessed at the time, so I don't have an accurate time in it right now, so I'm going to want to reset the, the time. I, I got my phone with me, which has the time on it. So I'm going to reset it, and we'll come back uh, in a couple days and revisit it and see if it's keeping time and keeping the date. Uh, if I remember correctly, it used to have a time um, problem and a date problem. I don't know if it was just like it was running a little bit slow behind and it just lost a little bit of time, or if, if it was something a, a little more drastic than that. So. We're going to kind of look at that and, and see if it still has issues with that. And I'm not sure, maybe somebody can tell me if uh, these Williams pinball machines, uh, do you have one and is the clock and the, the date and the time pretty accurate on it or does it always vary a little bit? So that's, that's one thing I'm going to look into. All right, well, first let me go ahead and turn it on. And uh, I'm sure it'll come up and say, yeah, press enter for test report. All right, well, that's the first thing we need to do because that will tell us what errors we got. So let me go ahead and zoom in on the color display here. And as you can see, this is Sunday, May 16th. 2021 but it's not 1223 uh, very close I made a pretty good guess it's 1237 right now so uh, yeah guess pretty good all right well still I want to go into the setup and set the time to start with well actually we can go into uh, test here. Let me turn this other camera on. Now I have a camera set on the behind the coin door is the uh, four buttons that control the menu system and uh, this one here is broken off. It was like that when I got the game. Uh, that's the begin test and the enter button. And then, of course, the two middle ones are the plus and minus for the menu system. Plus, also, it's plus and minus for the volume control, for turning the volume up and down. And then, the one over here that's kind of hard to see, the black button, uh, that one is the escape, which backs you up in the menu system. And uh, it's also a service credit button. So... Like if uh, you were the person that maintained the game and you didn't want to use tokens or quarters or whatever to, to uh, service the game to put credits on it, you would just push this button right here when it's in its normal operation. Okay. Let's go ahead and press... Uh, the enter button to begin test. And switch F3 left flipper end of stroke switch. That's the only error we got. All right, let's press begin test. 
that bookkeeping. Uh, I'm going to get out of that. Utilities. Hit enter. Okay. Now let's hit the plus. Clear coins. Reset HSTD. Set time and date. All right, so we hit enter. And there's our time and date. All right, it's, it's 12, so uh, let's see, to advance, we'll just hit the enter. Now it goes to the, the minutes. So uh, go up, it's 1246. And the date is correct. Okay, so that's that's how you uh, do it with the, the buttons to get into the menu system. I did it a while ago and we've already reset it, but I had to do it again because for some reason this camera, uh, it cut off and it, it didn't record and I thought it was recording. So, But I wanted to show you what these buttons do uh, to get into the uh, menu system. Now, let me go ahead and uh, I'm going to cut this camera off and I'm going to exit. You hit this black button on the end right here to exit and the game boots back up again. And of course I got the door open so it disables the interlock and the play field high power so you have to close the, uh, the door for any of the solenoids to work and the flashers. Okay, uh, we'll go ahead and cut that off and get this camera out the way. Let's go ahead and remove the glass so we can get underneath the play field. All right, you got a lever inside the coin door here. You pull it to the left. That unlocks the, the bar here. So we take that off, put it aside, push the lever back so I can close the coin door. Alright, just want to close the coin door so it doesn't interfere with the glass coming off. Now it's been a while since the glass is off so it's a little crusty around the edges. It's amazing how much dust settles on a pinball machine. Ouch. All right, when you're pulling it off, you want to kind of, you don't want to bend the glass because it'll break, but you don't want the weight of the glass, you know, pushing down on the channel. So you want to kind of pick it up a little bit just to, to sort of help it so it'll slide out. Oh, that's bad. I have to clean that good. Okay, so I'm going to put the glass over here on the carpet because this is safety glass and if you put it down on hard concrete it can explode on you and that's that's not a good thing believe me okay now let me open the coin door again and uh, let me put the camera back up here because I'm gonna use the uh, the buttons again to go into the menu and I'm going to kick the balls out because before you uh, raise the play field you want to always unload the balls so let me go ahead and get ready to do that okay 
I'm gonna go back into the menu system here. So I'm gonna hit the enter button. And of course, we already know that the left flipper end of stroke switch is a problem. So let's go into the test. I believe it's in the test menu. Uh, been a while since I've done this, so not exactly sure where it's at. Here it is. It's uh, test 18, clear out balls. So now we hit enter. Remove all balls from under the play field. We hit enter again. Okay, I think I'm going to have to push the button in to give power to the solenoids. Yes. Okay, that didn't kick the ones out on the cannons, but I'll take them out anyway. All right, so I'm going to look at the balls real good and make sure they're, they're clean and not rusty. has been a while since I've played the game, but these are fairly new balls, so uh, I don't think that's going to be a problem. But you always want to check them because you don't want balls that are rusty and uh, have nicks on them because sometimes if there's any metal parts that can hit you can actually put little little dings and scratches in the balls and that will destroy your play field eventually if you keep keep using them and uh, rusty uh, rusty and dirty balls are just like sandpaper so Okay, now we'll go into test again. Let me see if I can get the camera a little closer to the play field. Okay. Alright, it looks like this one's not lighting. That one's not lighting. Asteroid threat. Time rift. The wormhole. The rest of those are lighting up. All right, let's go up here to the top of the play field. Looks like this two time, two time shuttle is not lighting up. This rescue light's not lighting up. And up here in the, let's see, the lane changer lights. This one here on the left is not lighting up, and the other two are. And that looks like pretty much everything. Everything else seems to be lighting up. So, uh, all right, let's go ahead and raise the play field up and uh, find out if the problem is just loose or blown out light bulbs or if we have some other problem. Okay, let's see if we can raise this play field up.
remember how to do this. Okay. Been so long, I forgot how this is. It's supposed to lock in and then pivot up. I guess first thing I do is cut the game off. There we go. Star Trek Next Generation is just such a heavy game. It's got so much on the play field. And I hate it when you when you prop it up, it wants to twist the uh, the play field a little bit. It should have a prop on both sides. But it doesn't, so uh, we just have to do make do with what we got here. Okay. Well, first I guess we can take a look at that end of stroke switch on the left flipper. See what that looks like. Okay, well, it's a little hard to see and hard to get the camera up in here, but this is the the par, the, the shaft for the flipper, and this is the spring that, that pulls the flipper back. So that's the action of the flipper right there. And as you can see right there is the end of stroke switch, and it's open in the rest position, and when you flip it open, it closes. So it's opening and closing, but hopefully it's just got some corrosion on there, not making contact. So first thing we're going to do is got a burnishing tool. Here it is right here. They make different ones. This one here is not quite like a file, but it's a, it's a piece of metal. resembles a file, but it really doesn't have any uh, cutting edges on it. it. I guess it's just uh, a little roughed up. And what you do is, it has a, a little handle on the end right there, kind of like it's just coated in like a plastic for you to grab onto. You just take and spray a little deoxid on it. And then you just take it and put it between the contacts and then close the switch. And actually, it's kind of rougher than I thought because it, it actually sounds like a file, but if you look at it and examine it, it's kind of smooth. I mean, a lot of times, in the old days especially, they would just take a piece of paper, like a, a piece of cardboard, like a, a match cover or whatever, or business card, and stick between the contacts. Now, on a pinball machine, you have basically two types of contacts. You have a, a high voltage contact, which would be like, especially the old electromechanical, where everything is brute force with coils and, uh, and higher voltage, and they, they actually spark an arc. And they, you have to kind of use a file on them or sandpaper uh, because they have the contacts are like a uh, hard tungsten, which uh, can stand the high heat. Then you have, like for the switch matrix, like for the targets and all, uh, on electronic pinball machines, uh, you a lot of times have silver contacts or contacts that are, you know, they're just signal based. Uh, they don't really have any high current or voltage to them and you actually, sandpaper will ruin those. So you, you don't want to use anything harsh on them. 
a uh, little deoxid with a little piece of cardstock or something like that will clean those just fine. So anyway, uh, we'll see if that's enough to do it there. And uh, we'll have to go into the switch test mode and find out if that switch is now working. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, now if you look at the, the little square on the screen there, look at the right hand edge from the top down, I think it's like the third or the second dot, the third if you count the line, the dot on the line, I don't know if that's a, a dot or not. All right, I'm going to close the end of stroke switch on the left flipper. All right, see the little square on the, about the third dot down, just to the left of the T on the T3, D1. When I close the switch, the little little box goes around the, the little dot. That tells me that switch is working. All right, so that should be fine. All right, let's go back into the light test. All lamp test. Okay. Now, let me bring you down here and we'll see if we can't get to some of these lights down here. Figure out which ones don't work and see if we can replace some of them. Alright, well it's usually not a good idea to change light bulbs with the, uh, the power on. You're better off if to just make a note of which ones aren't working. But sometimes it's a lot easier and if you uh, not a chance of shorting the lights out. That's what you got to look out for. Especially if you got a uh, a light socket like this one right here. An exposed socket. If you have to bend it to try to get the light bulb in it, you want to make sure that you don't hit any anything else because if you short it to like solenoid voltage line or something like that, uh, believe me, you're going to have a bad day. So as uh, long as you know what you're doing, you can get by with it, but there are problems. All right, now, Star Trek Next Generation has some of these PC boards that have the little twist-in lights that you just untwist it and pull the, the little twisty part out that uh, the socket it holds the bulbs in. And that makes it nice for some of them. So uh, this is one of them right here. All right, that one don't want to come out. Let's try this one. All right, that one came out. Okay. So they're very similar to... Um, if you ever replaced any instrument panel lights in a Chevrolet pickup truck, even Ford might use this type of lights, I don't know, but a lot of automotive uh, uh, instrument panel lights use sockets very similar. They might not be identical, but so you just pull the, the bulb out. And this is a 555 wedge base light. And I just have a whole big box of them here. So we'll just plug a new one in. And that one is now working. All right. Had to force this one out a little bit. All right, let's change this one. And if we're lucky, it's nothing but just the, the light bulbs blown out.
All right, that one came on for a second and then it acted like it blew out. It did. A brand new bulb just blowed out. Cheap China junk. All right, let me put another one in. All right, that one's working. Okay, well, you get the idea. I'm going to go through these other lights. Some of them are kind of hard to get to. You can't even hardly get your hand up in here. Like this one right here. So you might have to, if you can't quite get up in there because of all these wires here, you can get your uh, pair of needle nose pliers. Let me see if I got any around here. Okay, I couldn't find any needle nose pliers, but uh, I do have my wire strippers that has like a little plier nose on them here. So I think I can do it with this. And again, you just want to make sure you don't uh, short nothing. And you can even tell that bulb has got a lot of soot on it. new and in. Okay, that one works. All right, well, we had some other bulbs up forward here. It's going to be a little hard to get to, so I'm going to go ahead and finish changing the rest of the bulbs. I mean, it's not rocket science, just changing bulbs. So let me go ahead and do that, and when I get all the bulbs done, I'll be back. Okay, well, I almost made it home free on changing out the light bulbs that were blown out. So far, all of them that I've changed have been blown out with the exception of two of the little twisty sockets in the circuit boards. Uh, there was, um, it was either corroded into socket where the bulb wasn't making a good connection uh, or there wasn't enough tension and it wasn't making contact on the wire that comes out of the bulb. So I had to sort of take a little screwdriver and, and kind of bend the contacts back together. So I think what I'm going to do in the future I'm going to go ahead and, if, if they're available, I'm going to order some of these uh, little twisty uh, bulb sockets here just so I'll, I'll be able to replace the ones that are bad rather than trying to make them work. Uh, I was able to get those two working, but I don't know if they're going to hold up if, if it was because the, the little copper contacts in them, uh, maybe they've lost tension. And it just, it seems like, you know, I, I bend them and put the bulb in, take the bulb back out, and they kind of bend back. So uh, they, I'm sure they probably need replacing. So I'll look into that, see if they're available. Uh, okay, I got one bulb that's, that's a bear. This board right here, which is under some of the inserts in the center, top of the play field, uh, two of them are, I think, like Delta Shield I forget exactly what they're labeled as, if they even got a label, but anyway, some of them have those type sockets, and some of them just have the bulb is uh, plugs into a socket that's soldered to the board here. Anyway, all of them on this board right here are working except for one, and it happens to be the one that's underneath the subway ramp right here. I can see it. I can stick my finger in here. I can come in from the other side. I can feel it, but I can't get anything on there to pull that bulb out. It's in a, in a socket, just a plug-in socket, just like this. So, the only thing I see to do, I'm not going to remove this subway, that's for sure. Uh, it's got uh, three screws with standoffs that uh, screw into the wood. So, I'm going to try to take two of them out and loosen the third one up and see if I can 
maybe swing the board around uh, far enough to get that out. So let me get you set up on the tripod and we'll see what happens. Okay, and for this one, I'm kind of taking my own advice. I got the power off to the game because I don't want to take a chance on shorting anything out. Uh, you know, if, if it was to slip loose, it could hit some of these other lights or whatever. So I don't want to do that. So anyway, I'm going to start with these two top ones here. And I'm just going to back them out to where I think they're out of the wood. Seems like they're, the screw is holding pretty tight into that insert. Might be a rather long screw here. We'll see. Okay, that's good. The screw is tight in the insert and the insert is holding to the board. So we may be able to just remove the whole board, but I'm going to try first just loosening this one up. Nope, not going to be able to swing around far enough. So I'm going to go ahead and take the whole board loose. And this board unplugs, so uh, a lot of times these type of sockets right here, uh, if they solder onto the board, you can get cold solder joints on them. So I'm going to look at those real good because when I first got this, uh, the, the big board underneath the saucer section up here, up, up top here, uh, some of the um, some of these and and the flasher bulbs had uh, cold solder joints, and one of the sockets and bulb had fell completely off the board and was laying in the bottom of the cabinet. So I pulled that board off when I first got to the game years ago, and reflowed all the solder on the board. But I, I didn't do anything to these little boards here. I don't have my magnifying glasses on, but just looking at them, they don't look like they have any bad solder joints. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, since that's kind of a pain to get out, you know, these uh, bulbs have been in there a while. So I'm going to go ahead and change all of them in this board. I don't know if, I know that this one in particular was bad, this one here. But like I say, I'm going to go ahead and replace all of them. And it's always possible it could be to, to sock it corroded and bad too so snaps in pretty good so it's a tight fit anyway all right go ahead and replace these so I'm gonna go ahead and just take them all off And then I'm going to replace the bulbs in them. And these are fitting in tight, so Maybe these uh, hadn't been changed in a while. If you get ones that's been changed quite often, that's the ones where you'll find you'll have uh, sockets, the terminals will be kind of loose in them. Because I'm sure they're only good for so many uh, times of plugging 
plugging them in and out. All right. All right, I got them all in now, and this is self-contained, so it's it's no ground that hooks to anything. Every, everything is through this plug right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and just hold it and turn it on and make sure they all light up before I uh, put it back. Okay, and all of them are lighting. So that's good. Cut it back off. And let's go ahead and put it back on. Alright, two goes up to the top and the one goes down to the bottom. And what did I do with my driver? Like always, I put it in my pocket. Alright. Go ahead and get the easy one started first, which is the one I can kind of see. Now, when you're starting screws, whether it's in wood or plastic, even metal for that matter, you want to make sure you get it back in the exact same threads that it came out of. And you can tell by how easy it screws in. It even helps sometimes if you put a little pressure on it and reverse it and then you can feel it sort of fall down into the groove because if you try to force it in to a, a thread that's not there uh, you can you can strip out the threads that you got So if they don't go easy, chances are you're cutting new threads and you need to stop and think about what you're doing. Back it up and try it again. But if they go easy, you probably got it in the same threads. And you're going in wood here, so you just want to snug them up because you don't want to strip them out. They'll hold. Okay, that should be the last of the bulbs, but we're going to put the play field down and check it out again and, and uh, make double sure we got all of them. Okay. Alright, it's down. Cut power on. Okay. Let's take a quick look and see what it looks like. Alright, let's put it back in light test mode. All lamps test. I'll push this button. And all lights should light up. Let me cut this light off here. All of those are lit. That's lit under there. 
All the saucer lights are lit. Shields are lit. All of these are lit. Got those. All of those. This is the, the booger that we just had to do. That's the one that we couldn't get to without taking that board loose. So we got all these working now. That working all here. Whoops, I got one more I got to get. This lane changer right here. Gonna have to take this uh, red lane changer lens cover off and, and fix that board, but uh, I mean that light. But all of those are working now. So it looks like we got everything except for that one. So, okay, it's so always one in the crowd. Let's do that. Okay, well this one just takes a Phillips screwdriver. Only thing is, it it's the same way. It it also holds the post down with the little small rubber washers around it. Uh, I guess I could have. I don't know if I could have got to it from the bottom or not but I'm sure I probably could sticks up through the play field, so I probably would have had to uh, taken the socket loose on the bottom side, so it doesn't really matter. We'll just pull that off, and there's the bulb right there. Hopefully we can, yeah, enough sticking up. Ah, that's the bayonet style. So this is a, uh, a GE 44. All right. Well, I got a box of those buggers too, I think. Ah, let's see. Yep. 44, 6.3 volts at 0.25 amps. When you got pinball machines, you got to have bulbs. Or as Wallace at uh oh Wallace at TNT likes to say bubs. All right, got that back in. All right, take a look at this. It's been a few years since I put a rubber kit on it, but they still seem like they're in pretty good shape. I believe I do have another rubber kit for it, but. Uh, no, no need in putting something in you don't need. All right, one of these is a, a wood screw, but the the one on this side is a machine screw that probably goes into uh, a blind nut under the play field. So the one that goes into the blind nut, it's no problem usually getting them started. But this one that goes into the wood. Just gonna make sure you get that started correctly. The one that's got the uh, machine screw, you can tighten down a little tighter and just snug the back one down. Okay. By golly, I hope we got it this time. That one is done anyway. All right. Well, let's check them out one more time. Okay. Okay, for a minute there I thought that blue one here wasn't lighting up, but I see it is.
I'm not sure if it's any under this plastic or not, but this is up in the corner, kind of behind and underneath the ramp. So uh, I'd have to look in the manual to see that. If, if there are any that's hidden under the, the ramps here and all, uh, you have to kind of take them ramps apart to get to it. So, but I'm not going to worry about them right now. Uh, well, everything that I can see, which is really all I'm interested in right now, if I can't see it, I don't care if it's burned out or not. So, uh, yeah, I've already checked the flashers. So, um, all right, everything's looking good. Okay, well, I counted them and, whoops, dropped one. I changed 18 light bulbs. So, uh, there was a lot more blown out. Well, all of them weren't blown out. As you've seen, there was about four of them that I just changed on that one, uh, one area because it was easy to get to all of them since I had to take it loose. So a lot of people are probably saying, why are you even fooling with incandescent uh, light bulbs? Why don't you just put a LED kit in it and be done with it? Well, I've thought about that. I am kind of a purist. I like to keep a game original if possible. But as you can see, I got a color DMD and I love that. Uh, and I did put the uh, the laser the lasers in the cannons. I like that. But beyond that, I haven't really done anything else to this game. Um, yeah, I, I could I'd like to try LEDs, but the main holdback is the price. Uh, and yeah, you can say. Uh, it's really not that expensive once you break it down, but uh, because supposedly LEDs will, will last you a long time. Now, LEDs do go bad on occasion, but for the most part, they're pretty reliable. Uh, but anyway, I, I just looked up on the internet. Uh, if you go with Comet Pinball, they sell a kit for this. I believe it's a complete kit, $194.99. Marco has a kit for $219.99. Pinball Bulbs, their kit is $219.99. Coin Taker offers three different kits. The Super LED kit is $247.95. The Frosted LED kit is $218.95. And the non-ghosting kit is $267.95. Well, I really don't know which would be the best. A lot of people also say, well, you're better off, don't get a kit. Just buy the individual uh, LEDs and do it yourself. Okay, well, because, you know, a lot of people say you come out cheaper that way, but... If you don't buy the right bulbs or the right LEDs to put in there the first time, you done messed up because you'll have to rebuy them again if you're not satisfied with them. So, you know, this one of these personal preference things where you really need to see a game that somebody has LED'd and look at it and say, yeah, I like it, or yeah, some things I don't like about it. So you need to do research. You really need to see these in person because video and pictures and all doesn't do something like this justice. So, uh, yeah, it's not something you'd want to just jump right into. Now, a lot of people have bought every one of these kits or, you know, different people have bought these different kits. And all of them say they're satisfied with, with the kits for the majority. There are a few that say, yeah, well, I, I, the kit is fine, but there was a few things I changed here and there. Like I say, it's a personal preference thing. So I'm going to have to study on that. They fork out that kind of money, uh, even though the cheapest ones are $219.99. That's still $220 plus shipping. So, you know, in these days and times, it's not chicken feed. So, 
yeah, it's something I, I want to do in the future. Now, if any of these companies wants to showcase their LEDs and want to send me a kit, even if it's a discounted kit, you know, I'm not looking for a handout, so I'd be glad to put them in and give them a try. But uh, until I can decide which one I really want, which one I think deserves the price of putting in this game, and I do think this game deserves uh, this type of an upgrade. Um, until then, I got plenty of incandescent light bulbs. And as you can see, I have no problem changing them, even though sometimes they're a pain in the, in the rear. Okay, well, with that said, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the play field up a little bit. Mainly just get the dust off of it. And um, uh, I don't get a whole lot of plays on my pinball machines. So they don't really get that dirty other than just natural dust getting in them. But that's what you got to kind of keep clean because if your play field is dusty, you get your balls rolling around on the surface and that turns into just grime, it will dig into the uh, play field. But um, so I'm basically just going to clean it. I'm not going to wax it. I'm going to use, I believe I only need Novus One. I'm just going to wipe, wipe it down basically. So um, yeah, uh, I really should put some wax on it in the future. Maybe if I put an LED kit in it and I have to pull a lot of the stuff off the top of the play field to put some of the LEDs in, then I'll probably go ahead and give the play field a good cleaning. Probably even go ahead and stick another uh, rubber ring kit on it in the process. And I'll probably go ahead and wax it. Uh, just so it'll be done. Uh, but I'm not going to do it anytime soon. Uh, at least not in the near future anyway. But that being said, leave uh, in the comments, what type of wax do you use on your pinball machines? Uh, do you like a wax that's designed for pinball machines? I think uh, years ago, I remember they had something called Wildcat or something like that. It was made for pinball machines. Do they even still make that? Anybody use it? Is it any good? Do you use just regular automotive wax, turtle wax, uh, paste wax, liquid wax? What type of wax do you prefer and what do you think is best? I know that's going to be another personal preference thing and probably going to get a whole line of answers. But uh, yeah, go ahead and, and uh, leave in the comments and let me know what kind of wax you use on your pinball machines. And I'll look them over and give it a try. So anyway, let's, let's go ahead and uh, just wipe this thing down and then we'll be able to put the glass back on and we'll be good to go. Okay, let's clean off the play field. Uh, usually I have a shop vac out here, but it's out in the garage and I'm not going to bother about getting it in here. It doesn't appear too dirty, but there is a little bit of uh, debris on the play field. And when I pulled the glass out, when I started to work on it, if you watched in the beginning, uh, the glass was squealing like a a pig making bacon. So uh, I'm going to have to clean these grooves out, little tracks that the, the glass slides in. So first I'm going to just take a, a kind of a stiff brush, which is like a flux brush that I use, or acid brush they call them. And just, you could probably do it with a, well I don't know if a toothbrush is deep enough, but I'm just going to put it in the groove and And just work it down the groove and I can see stuff falling out of it. Dust. I do this first because there's no need to clean the play field and then you do this and, and the stuff just falls down on the play field. I don't know if the camera pick up that dust coming out of it or not, but it really should take some air and blow this out. 
but I'll leave the deep cleaning for later. This will do for now. At least I'm hoping it will. All kinds of dust coming out of that. Okay, that'll be good. Then I got my detailing brush here, which it's not real stiff, but it's pretty stiff. And uh, I use this a lot to clean dust off of games. Back when I was servicing games in the, in the arcade, did that for five and a half years. Uh, got a lot of use out of this brush just dusting off arcade games where especially video games where they have fans in the in the cabinet and the fans are sucking the, the air out of the cabinet well it's pushing the air out of the cabinet to kind of cool everything inside but what it also does is it pulls all the dust out of the air in through all the cracks around the monitor bezel Anywhere the cabinet's got a little crack, it'll pull that dust in and the dust will build up and you'll have like little dust bunnies around the edge of the, the monitor and edge of the control panels and everything else. So I always have to kind of dust everything off every so often. Now there are some places uh, you're not going to be able to get unless you do a thorough cleaning. But uh, you just have to do the best you can do. I guess it's amazing how much dust can form on something that's enclosed. We're just going to hit it with a lick and a promise. Promise to do a more thorough job on another day. If you look at some of my older videos, you can see why I put a, uh, a cliffy protector in a neutral zone. I got a video for that. And of course I got the video showing putting the lasers in the, in the cannon. Got a couple videos where I've worked on the lane, uh, the subway diverters. Had a problem with the diverters. Uh, the problem mainly was the, uh, the old grease on the shaft would harden up and cause the, uh, the shaft to cause the diverter to, to stick and hang up. All I'm doing now is just trying to get all this dust pushed down to the bottom of the play field. Not so much the dust, but a lot of times you'll you'll find little particles, and I don't know where they come from or whatever, but they just get on the play field, and sometimes they'll even cause the ball to hang up. It doesn't take much for a a ball to hang up. It's 
So basically just trying to get any any of those little dust bunnies, dust boogers, whatever you want to call them. Getting them off before I put any anything else on the play field. Okay, well that's about the best I'm going to get it. Like I say, give it a lick and a promise. Okay. Now I'm going to take some good old Novus number one. Now this is a plastic cleaner, but a lot of people use it on uh, play field surfaces. It does make it shine. I don't know what type of clear coat they put on this, but... Uh, I don't know if it's a plastic urethane, I guess it's plastic, so I guess hence this is why this probably works. I got a microfiber cloth. You can pick these up fairly cheap at uh, Harbor Freight. And of course it also works good on the plastics. So we know the plastics are plastic, right? And the ramps. Of course you're not going to be able to get inside the ramp, but you can get the, the beginning of the ramp here a little bit. The part that you can see it the rag soaks it up so you can just use the rag too because it's got some of it soaked on it And this is basically what I'm going to do down the whole play field, so you kind of get the idea. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this up. We'll be right back. Okay, well the deed is done. I think I spent maybe 20 minutes on it total. Like I say, just a, a quickie to get any any dust and anything off the, the play field. And uh, that Novus does shine it up a little bit. The stainless steel on, on these uh, up kickers here had some kind of crusty looking stuff forming on them and it cleaned them up real good uh, both sides so yeah I'm, I'm happy with it. it it'll do for now and uh, I noticed that the uh, the time and date is keeping time uh, it's within a minute from where I set it three days ago so uh, it's only been three days, but time will tell, but it seems to be working okay. So I don't think we have any problems there. All right, I've cleaned the glass real good on the bottom side and a little bit on the top side. And after I slide it in, well, it's easy to clean the top side. So that's why I didn't take too much time on the top. But of course, you can't clean the bottom uh, after you install it. So let's go ahead and install the glass in. We'll play a game or two. Okay, well just like before, when you're sliding it in, you want to hold up the weight on the back side of the glass uh, to keep the weight of the glass from causing it to, 
to uh, break. Let's see if it slides any better. Oh yeah, didn't hear one single pig squeal that time. All right, let's put the lockdown bar back on. This key wants to hang up. Wants to hang up sometimes. All right, we got to bring our lever back here. All right. Now I'll just take and clean the top off with some Windex and we'll play us a game. Okay, well as you can see, I don't really have a decent camera setup to record pinball. Pinball is kind of hard to record unless you got specialized equipment. <clears throat> so I guess this is about the best I can do. So let's go ahead and start a game. I already have some credits left in it. Welcome to the Enterprise. Forgetting about that third flipper up there. It's been so long since I played. Gonna need plenty of practice. Used to be pretty good. I could hit that center center scoop up there under the Borg ship pretty pretty much any time I wanted to, but. anything.
genital. Hi, what do we want to do here? Check coordinates for the Alpha Quadrant. Alpha Quadrant. Got it! Excellent shot, Lieutenant. Ah. Check coordinates for the Beta Quadrant. Let that slip by. Try one of these other ones here. Flip a skill shot. Ha! Ah. No good there. Good luck. Because I felt sorry for me. What are you doing here? Let's play a little game. You, we don't have time for your games. Is that the best you can do? Let's try to continue one time. Congratulations, Lieutenant Commander. Alright, let's see. Let's do an asteroid threat. Suggestions. We can destroy the asteroids in our path, sir. Make it so. Okay, not this time. I'm sure this is a rather long video, so I'm not going to bore you with any more. Uh, Space, the final frontier. Oh, what the heck! These are the boys. Got one more credit. Enterprise. It's continuing. One more game. Nothing, sir. All right. This won't take long. Enterprise, the port has entered the space. Intercept immediately. That will be IG out. Course laid in, sir. Engage. No kickback. The kickback is ready. Ah. 
one probe. The probe has discovered nothing, sir. No, thank you. Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of the Starship Enterprise, its continuing mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and new civilizations, to boldly go where no one has gone before. Okay, well there we have it, my Star Trek Next Generation Pinball Machine, uh, it's all ready to go, and I promise I'm not going to pile it up with junk, um, it's going to be like this and I'll be able to come out here and turn it on and play it anytime I want to. So now I got everything else in here to do the same way, so be sure to subscribe because we're going to go through this stuff one by one. And also like to get a project in this year if I can uh, during the summertime here before before you know it summer will be over if I don't get started so okay well this one is in the books it's finished this has been another arcade fix have you had your arcade fix today <laughs>